How's it going everyone? I wrote an article not too long ago detailing how you can create a server on Golang. It was kind of like a small introduction to getting started with Go and writing your own servers. So check out the article. So in this video, we'll just be grabbing pieces of code and putting it together to kind of go ahead and create that server. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. We'll start off by importing the package main. And by the way, all the code is within the gist. There's a link within the description for all the code, or you can just check the Medium article. We'll go ahead and import all the dependencies that we'll require. As you can see, we have net.http for our server and format for formatting stuff. We'll also go ahead and bring in our welcome struct. The struct will just hold all the data we will use to output to our template or our HTML file. Within the main function where the code or entry point for our application, the first thing we want to do is create some form of dummy template for our welcome. And so the name variable within the welcome struct will be anonymous and the time, we're just going to set it to time.now. Let's then parse our template. We'll give it the string to our file, which has our HTML information. We'll parse it and then save it within a variable called templates. Now let's get into the meat of our actual server. So every server must have a function called a handle func. And that takes in an endpoint. In our case, it's just a slash, a forward slash. It also takes in a function that has information about the response writer. So what we'll send back to the client as well as the request, what the client sent to us. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to parse the request or parse the information the client sent to us. And we'll be smart about it. We'll see if the client had some information in the URL with the variable name. We'll take that name and set our welcome.name to the name passed within the request. Last but not least, we'll take the templates variable that stored our template and execute it. If it returns an error, well, we'll just respond by telling the client, hey, there's a server internal error or the typical 500. If there's no error, then we're good to go. The server can then respond to the client with the HTML information that it currently has. We'll finally to start the server because we haven't started it yet by using http.listen and serve and pass in the port. And that's pretty much it. We have created a Go file that runs a server. So the next thing we have to look at is creating HTML files for our template. I mean, so far we have not done any HTML work, but we need to get something that the client needs to see. So let's jump into that. So I just quickly ran through what I'd written within our code. Um, if this section was a bit too fast for you guys, do not worry. The next video following this one has everything in detail. So stick around for that. So now let's go ahead and create a folder that will hold our templates. We'll call it templates. And within it, we'll create a file called welcome template.html. So this will house all the HTML content we'll need in order to display whatever it is to our user. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of the abbreviations provided by VS Code. I'll just simply type it HTML5. And there we go. We have some uh, boilerplate code that we can now use. I'm going to go ahead and change this title. Let's call it Go Website. Actually, let's play around with Go's dynamic template engine. And let's use a variable within our title. And we'll use a variable name that we created earlier. So we'll just say welcome and whatever variable is passed as name, we shall use that. Let's do a bit of formatting. And within our body, let's copy and paste this command. And all it does is say welcome and we pass in the variable name as well as the time variable. We've created a CSS class called welcome and center that will just center all the text. Let's go ahead and create some CSS. And we'll pretty much just use the CSS to make our HTML look a bit more attractive. It's a typical convention to have your CSS files within a static folder, just called uh, static. And we'll create another folder called style sheets where we'll actually have our CSS files. And we'll just call our CSS file a welcome template.css. But you can name these files whatever you want, so long as you're consistent and you remember the changes you made. We're just going to go ahead and copy paste the CSS um, from my Medium article that I showed earlier. One important thing to note is the URL for the background image that we're going to add. Yeah, so let's go ahead and find that image. Um, I love getting my images from pexels.com. They have tons of free stock photos by pretty, pretty cool photographers all around the world. I mean, you can go ahead and search for whatever it is that you want. Um, but yeah, let's just scroll down and see something that is, I guess, pretty cool. Mm, yeah, I think I like this one. Um, it's beautiful Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah, let's go ahead and use this image. We can actually download it for free and Bam, there we go. So we're going to save this image within our folder, um, right within our CSS folder, the style sheets folder. Um, that's just because how that's how we set things up. And we're just going to rename it to background.jpg. Let's run a let's have a little sanity check right now and make sure everything is running according to plan. And I'm just going to go and simply run go run main.go. 
Now you should note that with if you're using Windows, you'll get a message regarding firewall firewall rules. Just quickly enable those as we're not trying to do anything crazy. I'm just gonna drag the screen so you can see it. Awesome, so we actually get our information. It's welcome anonymous and the date that we have. If you notice something that our image is not showing and that's something we need to sort out. Well, there's a line of purposefully omitted within our code and let's, let's walk through our code to see where that line is. One other small change I'm going to make to our code is I'm gonna uh, print a line that lets us know that our server has started. So it's typically important for us to know that our server is running by it printing out some stuff to the standard app. So here, just simply say serving on port 8080 and we'll know, cool, our server it should be running at this point in time. So one interesting thing about Go is just because you serve your HTML files doesn't necessarily mean all other static files are served too. So what's important that we have to do is that we have to go back within our code and ensure that we can actually go ahead and serve CSS files. So let's go to our main.go file. There's a little section I'm going to copy from our gist or from our medium article that incorporates the ability to use CSS. And here it is. So this three line piece of code does one thing. The first part, HTTP.handle says, hey, listen, while you're serving these files, right, from the template, if you come across a, a forward slash static anywhere, just know that we want to go ahead and serve files from a HTTP directory called static. Remember, we kept all our style sheet information within a top level directory called static. So basically, when it sees that static handle, it will start to serve all our CSS files from there, and we can put a path immediately after that static endpoint. Now within our HTML file, we can actually go ahead and link our CSS. So everything should be put together pretty solidly right now. Let's run a code real quick, see if it works. So it looks like our server is running on port 8080, and voila, I'm just gonna pull in this Chrome window, and it looks like we have everything we want, everything we need. Welcome anonymous, it's Feb 20th at 510. Let's go ahead and play around with our URL. Remember we had that variable within our HTML file where the name can be passed through via the URL. So let's go ahead and actually change that within our, our web browser and see if it reflects within the actual body of the web page. I'll just type in my name here and hey, there we go. Welcome Martin and the time that we set. So here we go. We have a server that's actually serving some HTML files that also have some CSS files attached to them. This is cool because we can now go ahead and do whatever we want. We now have a working server that can now be deployed to any service or cloud hosting platform. And that's it guys. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. Please leave anything that you'd probably want to see in the future in the comments, any errors I may have made in the comments. Um, I try and upload videos weekly, at least two videos a week to try and you know, keep myself going. All right. Feel free to support me on my Patreon if you can. And uh, once again, thanks so much.